Hey guys, James MC Reviews here, and happy Pride Month. Uh, to celebrate, we're gonna take a look at a show that was canceled simply because it had two girls kissing in it. Welcome to another TV log, and today we're gonna be taking a look at The Owl House Season 2. This show follows the adventures of Luce the Human, a teenage girl who is taken under the wing of the mysterious Owl Lady and is trained in the art of witchcraft in the magical land of the Boiling Isles. But in season two, that magical land is in serious danger, as the evil emperor hashes a plan to get rid of wild magic and destroys anyone who will stand in his way. So Luce and her friends have to work together to take down the emperor once and for all. I've been following the show in season two as it's gone on week by week, but all the episodes will be available to stream on Disney Plus uh, at the end of June, so please, uh, if it at all interests you go watch it i want as many people to watch this show before disney inevitably gives it the can as possible just as a last ditch middle finger to disney for canceling it and cutting it short starting off i have to say season two of the owl house is a major improvement over season one and season one was already really strong but it did have a few hiccups the one major one and i think even dedicated fans can agree on this uh, the one major issue was the pacing. The se season one pacing was pretty rough. It kind of felt rushed, especially towards the end. Like, these are all the threads that need to be put into place, and now we have this, like, epic finale, but it didn't really feel all that epic. Whereas now, with season two, they have a much better balance of st uh, story and, you know, more slice of life character developing episodes and I'm not sure if this change was like you know taken into account because of like the fan criticism or because they knew they were gonna get cut short but it just makes it the show feel a lot tighter now like there's no wasted time there's no you like don't get me wrong there are still very nice wholesome character moments um, throughout the season but it's just it's a lot more evenly balanced where you don't have it's not something like Steven Universe where you get like seven episodes of just filler and then a major plot progressive episode just dumped right in the middle of it. I also think the story this time around is a lot more engaging now that we actually like have a defined threat which we didn't really have in season one looking back like the emperor like the whole emperor's coven shit seemed more like a minor annoyance than like an actual legitimate intimidating threat like we had uh, lilith coming in every other episode like freaking rita repulsa from power rangers trying to force ida to join a coven but like we didn't really know why she needed to get her to join a coven we didn't know like we didn't really have any like strong idea of like what what the coven system even was or why it was started or like what the whole grand plan and all of this is but now that's been like properly established and more defined and the threat feels a lot more like important this time around which gets you more invested but when the show slows down and has a lot more you know character centric uh, stories and episodes and stuff like that it is still really good um i think the I mean, I said this in my season one video, the characters are what drives this show, and all of the characters, even the new ones that they introduce in this season, are fantastic. Um, Luce is a lot, I don't want to say a lot less compulsive <laughs> this season, because she does do a lot of, like, she's a lot more consistent, I'll say that. Like, she does, she rushes into danger, but she doesn't do it out of like i guess ignorance or like obliviousness she does it because you know she acknowledges the danger that she's putting herself in but she just wants to help and protect those that she cares about i also really like um ida's character in this uh season she is again again a lot more consistent she feels like a lot more responsible like she can still be reckless sometimes but she at least acknowledges the threat that they're facing and how they have to be a lot more careful this time willow and gus are still kind of just the like emotional support best friends but i think they both get their moments to shine in this season willow especially i think has had the one of the like best like character progressions uh in this season. She definitely uh, comes into her own. As far as the new characters go, I really love uh, Rain, uh, Ida's like love interest. We don't really get a ton of them. Like we, we do get that episode uh, like 
towards the later half of uh, the season where we see their sort of how they met and their sort of relationship and everything like that and but like that's kind of that's kind of it and we do see them interact a lot more towards the end but you know they rain spends a good chunk of the series or the season rather you know under the like capture of uh, the coven head so they don't really get a whole lot to do coven's against the throne coven's against the throne the cats <laughs> <laughs> so i'm hoping that they come back in uh, the the last three episodes in season three and they get a lot more to do because i really like I really like that character. I like, uh, you know, getting some non-binary representation, and I really love uh, their relationship with Ida, and especially the the Ida's Requiem episode. That was fucking beautiful. But I think the best character in this series so far, and the one who's had like the best arc, aside from Amity, which I talked about in the season one video, uh, is Hunter. Uh, this kid, I want to give this kid a hug. I feel so bad for him. Like, he starts off, like, he starts off pretty solid, um, in the first half of the season as a nice, like, secondary antagonist. Um, but then the more you, like, he starts to get involved in the stories and the more you start to, like, he know about his backstory and everything, and the more he starts to see his own sort of, like, you know, life sort of being unraveled in front of him and realizing that the Emperor isn't who he thought he was. It's just so heartbreaking to watch, but seeing him come back and, like, you know, gain that relationship with Luce and her friends and everything like that is just so cool to see. And um, it's clear that he's going to have a much bigger role in uh, the season three specials, so I'm really excited to see him back. Oh, I didn't even mention, uh, the one that I was really surprised by the, the amount of character development they got is King. First of all, Al Alex Hirsch's performance is fantastic. All the actors across the board are fantastic in this show, but Alex Hirsch really brought some, like, heart and emotion to King this time around, which, not to say that he didn't before, but, like, you really felt for this guy. Like, he, he started off as, like, believing he was this, like, all-powerful tyrant and, like, was this just power-hungry, like, egomaniac and everything like that. And now he just kind of wants to know what he is. He's grown a, this huge attachment to Luce since she's been here, and he just wants to have something and someone to fall back on because he knows that she's gonna have to leave. I think all the character relationships have been great, like, even beyond, like, the romantic ones, which we'll get to in a second, but, um, the characters' relationships have been what have carried this series, beyond the mystery, beyond the overarching story. Like, the way the characters interact with each other is fantastic. I really love the, like, motherly relationship that grows between uh, Luce and Ida. You really see like how much having her around has changed Ida as a person. The moments like in, in the finale where like she's trying to do everything that she can to get Luce away from her, not because she doesn't want her there, or she doesn't want her help, but she knows the danger that they're stepping into and she just wants to keep her safe is just so like heartbreaking to watch. Luce's relationship with her friends, like, admittedly the friends, like, take a bit of a backseat towards, uh, the second half of season two, but they're still great, like, their interactions off each other are fantastic, and then you throw Hunter into the mix, and it just gets even better. And now the hot button that has, uh, flooded this series with, uh, both high amounts of praise and high amounts of controversy is uh, the LGBT rep. They haven't explicitly said that this is why the show was cancelled, they just said it doesn't fit the Disney brand, which is still is still such an, a, a stupid excuse that you might as well just come out and say that that's why the show was cancelled. Even though it does suck that the show is getting cancelled, it is still really cool to see just how far the show has pushed its uh, LGBT representation. Like, I, I really love, you know, we, in this season, we finally see the Lumity ship set sail. Uh, we, like, we see them 
you know, we ob obviously we could always see more, but like we see them just hanging out and like walking around, like going on dates and stuff. And it's adorable. Their chemistry is fantastic. And I wish that we got a full season three so we could see more of that. Like, and what I really appreciate about the LGBT rep in this show is that it's not like pandering and it doesn't need to be like called out. Like even Dana herself has said, I believe on Twitter that, you know, like in, in the Boiling Isles, like, you know, homophobia doesn't exist. So like, you know, the fact that it's two girls who are in a relationship doesn't really mean anything. It's the sa It's treated the same way that you would treat a straight relationship in any other show. Like, it's just so normal. Like, you don't have that episode where, you know, like, Amity, like, comes out to her parents and the, the drama that, like, comes with that or, like, anything like that. Which, I, or L Luce and Amity getting, like, bullied at school for, like, being together. Which, I mean, not to say that those types of things don't happen, and I'm sure those can make for, like, intriguing episodes. But, I mean, like, number one, like, that leaves open more, like, opportunities for, like, storytelling and character progression and everything. And number two, you don't need it. It's just, like, it's just normal. You don't need to call attention to it because it's just so natural and, like, real. And I, I appreciate that about this show. Um, I think I've talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, so I'm going to briefly touch on the season finale. So this is your last chance to dip out before uh, uh, we go into some real spoilers. So the whole season arc uh, centers around uh, Luce and Ida and all the rest uh, working to stop uh, the Day of Unity, which is this event that Bellos has happened or has been putting together that will promise like some big paradise for like you know, people in covens and we'll get rid of wild magic forever and everything. The, f the finale this season is, well, for one, is a lot better than season one. Um, it's really high energy, really high stakes. Um, it's, it carries over across multiple episodes as well, which makes the danger and the uh, countdown feel a lot more like important. Just everything about these last few episodes from, you know, the writing to the animation to just the action, the emotion, everything about it is fantastic. And uh, it leaves the characters in a very, like, interesting and different place than they were uh, at the start. For one, um, they unleash this horrifying, you know, child demon thing called the collector who we haven't we don't really know much about um he's been sort of like a right hand man to bellos we don't really know much about who they are and what their deal is and what they're capable of but when he does show up not only are you like charmed by him but you are fucking terrified of him because with it's the same like it's the same thing with like when Bill Cipher shows up when in his first episode like the first like few minutes of him being on screen he you know turns the main villain of the series into hot chocolate mix and then swipes the uh, eclipse that's causing the the draining spell out of the way like he's turning off night mode on his phone and then starts restructuring the entire boiling aisles only leaving uh just enough time for Luce and her friends to escape into the human world, leaving King and the rest behind. Like, th that finale was really intense, and the emotions were very high, and, um, it's, it's, it's definitely got me intrigued. Like, the, the characters are all in very, like, interesting places. Like, and, you know, We've now let we we've now let an all powerful god loose on the boiling isles. Uh, Ida and Rain could both use a hand. Parts of uh, Bellos's remains have latched onto Hunter like he's venom or some shit. And now Luce and all her friends are trapped in the human realm with no way to get back. So it's both got me really excited, but also really nervous because they've only got three episodes left to wrap everything up with, and they've left a lot open 
to resolve in these last three episodes. But the good news is the episodes are going to be uh, longer this season. They're going to be like 40 minutes as opposed to the like 20. And you know, Dana and the crew have done a great job so far. So I I don't doubt they'll knock it out of the park. So yeah, those are my very rambly thoughts on uh, Owl House season two. I think this was, like I said, a major step up from uh, the first season. Um, it's paced a lot better. Uh, it's a lot more intriguing. The characters are wonderful. The animation is wonderful. Uh, the writing, the humor, everything. It's just like, it's so weird for Like I haven't felt this like passionately positive about a show since Gravity Falls. And it feels weird for me to say this because like Gravity Falls will always be my favorite cartoon. Like no questions asked. Like that will always be number one for me. But like with everything that Owl House has done, and especially if it sticks the landing with season three, it has the potential to be just as good, if not maybe even better than Gravity Falls. So I'm very excited to see what this show has to offer. It sucks that it's getting canceled. It sucks that so many hardworking people who pushed for you know proper representation are being let go. You know, hopefully this inspires more people to you know, push for more uh, representation in kids' cartoons, and cartoons in general. So, um, going to my ranking, I would have to give season two of The Owl House a 4.5 out of 5. But anyway, that does it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you've seen uh, The Owl House. Uh, what have you thought of it? Um, what are you excited to see in season three? Uh, how do you think it's gonna end? Let me know all that stuff down below. I've got more TV logs and more bucket list videos coming very soon, but until then, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date on what I'm posting, follow me on all my social media, subscribe to my main channel, everything you need to know will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.